Okay, having heard from Greg, I feel humbled. And I want to tell you why. I have a tremendous amount of chutzpah. It's, it's, does everybody know what chutzpah means? It's kind of like guts or whatever you want to call it, you know, like the willingness to go out on a limb and do things. I don't have even probably 1% of the experience that Greg has. So I don't speak from the authority of experience uh, anywhere near as much. And it feels a little overwhelming in this moment to try to act as if I know anything. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. This this is truly going on. I'm I'm very affected by what just happened. Um, I still believe that I have discovered and developed something of value, so I want to offer it. I just want you all to know that I'm a little bit wobbly in this moment, and I want to show you where in this what I am um, what I am offering fits. So it's <laughs> this is a this is an aspect of power with leadership and it very much has the fierce quality to it. Um, and it was born in me in response to two things. One is my experience in those IITs, International Intensive Trainings. How many here have been to an IIT? So that's quite a number of people. So uh, those of you who haven't will bear with us. You know that experience of open the window, close the window, and how long it takes to make that decision, and several days <laughs> of processing of that. I thought that was the worst advertising for NBC that anybody could make. If we ever want to create a world that works, to have a decision about opening or closing a window take hours, that doesn't really bode well for what we have to offer. So it gave me incredible motivation to create a decision-making process that uses NBC, that is needs-based, needs and that is efficient. That's, that's one motivation. The other is that I, I was crushed when sociocracy was introduced into the CNBC organization because I had a sense that we never gave our own native process a chance to show that it can grow to meet that need and something in, was introduced from the outside. I, I understand that you adapted it uh, but that was my experience. I'm not, um, you know, directly speaking to you. And th these two things combined in me into an intensity of desire to find something that works. And I, I think the, I want to tell you the principles that, um, that allowed me, and the breakthrough and the principles that, allowed, that are, are at the heart of this uh, process. And all of this is in your handout. I mean, actually, I can't say all of it because I don't know what I will say. But my, what the things that I'm intending to say are, are in your handout. So the, the, the key breakthrough that I had is that, and I'm absolutely confident of this, is that we cannot create a world on the basis of everybody doing only what they feel like. We absolutely can create a world on the basis of everybody doing what they're willing to do. So I, I want to tell you a tiny little story that I had no idea I was going to tell you, but is very relevant, and some of you have heard it. It's a story that involves my nephew, um, and therefore my sister. Um, so that brings up a lot because my sister is dealing with cancer for the last, on and off for the last several years and is no longer my active partner. She's not working, so um, that's pretty significant for me. This happened many years ago. He's now 
a, a thriving human being who has a big I and big room for, for the you and the we that is astonishing, blows my mind. At that time, he was three. Um, and um, parents, uh, uh, grandparents were staying in a downstairs room. And in the morning, he's banging on their head, above their head in a, in a you know, in some kind of a bat or stick or something. And so in Bal, my sister says to him, seeing you bang the, on the floor, I'm worried about our guests because I want them to be able to sleep for as long as they want. That, that's a strategy, of course, but it is a colloquial way of expressing a need to a three-year-old. Would you be willing to bang on the sofa instead? So you see that this is already in that consciousness. It, she's not telling him, don't do it, taking it out of him, or blah, blah, blah. And th that's not the big deal. The big deal is what happened afterwards, which is he said these words, I don't want to, but I'm willing. That's, that's what I mean by that key difference. And so when she says, how come you don't want to? He said, it's not waking me up. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I hope, I really hope that all of us can have that level of clarity. That's what, what the big I is, if, I, if I'm using your language. He knows what, what works for him and what doesn't, very simply and easily. Then she says, then why are you willing? At three years old, he could articulate these words, because I want to consider you. That's the, you know, as an aside, that's the quality that happens when somebody is never forced, mm -hmm. is that they find the natural giving. But the point of the story in this context is the distinction between want to and willing. And so I bank, I, I'm going to say it dramatically and provocatively, I bank the future of, of the world on our capacity to mobilize willingness to do all that needs to be doing. Because not all of it is fun. Not all of it is intrinsically fun. And all of it needs doing for us to be able to sustain ourselves. So there's, there've got to be people willing to do whatever is necessary to do. That's, that's, that was my breakthrough, is recognizing that if we, if we find willingness, then everything can be made to work. And there's faith in this, that there will be willingness. And I put it to test in one tiny little thing after another. Very simple things, you know, like going to a restaurant and asking people to just give what they're willing to give without looking at the at the um, check without thinking how much did I order and how much did somebody else order. Just give whatever you're moved to give for today. And it covers. And if it doesn't cover, then that means there wasn't enough willingness. Then I ask for more willingness. We're short $20. Anybody willing to give more? Never failed. Never failed. Always resistance up top. Always. Never fails. Always resistance. Really interesting. <laughs> So little experiments like this kind of like give me like little glimmers of evidence that I am on to something that's very critical. So then I started thinking about, you know, what, what is willingness? It's not a binary thing. It's like there is, there is, uh, there's a spectrum. So from this, I came up with um, something that now circulates in the NBC community beyond me, and, and that's the idea of thresholds, making requests at different thre levels of thresholds, and I will get into that later. The, the basic principle is that um, I want the necessary level of willingness relative to the, need, uh, to the level of need for, for something. So for example, right now in Japan, People are willing to do something that probably in ordinary circumstances they wouldn't be willing to do. They're exposing themselves, the workers there, are exposing themselves to levels of radiation that are likely to give them cancer later in life. 
they wouldn't be willing to do that on, on any old day. Right now, they're absolutely willing. I'm sure that they're not being forced. I don't think you can force somebody to do this. You cannot force somebody to do anything, but whatever. Um, so, what did you say? Let's not go there. Right. So, so that question of how do we work with willingness is the key question that I'm trying to solve in the decision-making process that I created. Um, so, I'm thinking about what is it that contributes to more willingness? And there are a number of things. One is, the more I know that my needs matter, the more willingness I have to stretch. Think about it for yourself. If it doesn't feel true to you, I want to hear about it. If you know that your needs matter, you're going to be more willing to do something that is not your preference than if you're not heard and you have a sense that the other person is trying to force you. This is this incredible paradox that I think makes what you're saying work. Why were the workers saying, I'll stay here with you? Because they knew their needs mattered. That's, it's a really, really, really simple piece. That's, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is the more I am able to hear other people's needs, the more willing, willingness I will have to do what they want. So it's, that's, that's the dance, is, is I need to know that I matter, and I need to open my heart to other people's needs. That's kind of like the, the backbone of how this process will unfold. Um, I want to uh, give you a couple more principles that I use, which is really, this is, uh, Greg already said this, really bringing things back to needs. However, it's only necessary if the willingness is not there. In, in other words, if I, if, when I tell you, could you pass me the salt, there's really absolutely no need for me to tell you what needs of mine will be met by having the salt shaker. Because there is kind of like an assumption of fundamental goodwill that is there in the flow of life all the time, or we wouldn't be able to function because we are social creatures. However, if, if I say, could you pass me the salt? And your response was, you always want things done for you. That means that the connection is not there. And then we drop into a different level right away. So I don't want to do processes that are not necessary. If I'm going to you know, make a proposal that I think, that I highly believe everybody will be fine with, I don't have to give a whole lot of rationale for it. It's a waste of time. I really want to use as few words as possible to get to the finish line. Um, second um, is if I'm going to needs, I want to include all the needs that, um, that, that are present in relation to something, as many as necessary to reach a decision that everyone can live with. And sometimes people think, what do you mean? The more needs you put on the table, the more difficult it will become. And my experience is that it's not true in two ways. One is, as people connect with needs and take ownership of them, it unleashes creativity. And the other is a time scale measurement. What do you measure as taking time? In other words, if you, if you invest two minutes in a decision and then for three years you pay the price of people sabotaging the project, that takes a whole lot more time than investing 10 minutes in the decision and everybody being on board. It, people tend to disconnect those two things because they think of those conflicts as inevitable. It's exactly the same thing in parenting. You know, the power struggles are seen as inevitable and, um, and so there's like part of life. But the time that it would take to negotiate with a two or three year old, something that works for them as well as for the parent, seems like excessive time that the parent is investing in the child. The punishment and power struggle time doesn't seem like, uh, like waste of time because that's just what happens. So I like to tie these two things together because that, that provides motivation to, to grasp why it's, why it's needed. Um, another thing that, that I use is I 
absolutely stay away from any notion of fairness. Fairness interferes with flow of needs and with creativity because it, it boxes things in. So uh, one of my little slogans is, it's not about what's fair, it's about what's possible. And I have found that even people in a, in a traditional setting can relate to this way of framing it. Because they, they know that sometimes something is, re is really the fair thing, but it's not possible to do because nobody wants to. So let go of even trying for fairness. Just focus on what's possible, where is their willingness, and is there enough trust? And uh, the last thing is when I try to facilitate a decision, I am holding the outcome lightly and the process tightly. I hold really tight reins on the process um, and, and let the, the outcome emerge without any attachment to how it, how it will be. Any questions so far? So um, now what I want to do is I want to do a simulation and just kind of like run through uh, little chunks of the process because um, the most um, specific part of it is the process of actually working with a proposal and trying to reach a decision. And there are most often uh, prep preparatory phases that you need to do ahead of time because it's like need to process information. So I want to kind of like dip into the first two parts and focus primarily on the last part. So um, for the simulation, I will want a few people sitting here being whatever the simulation is. You will take an active role in it. You will be making the decision and you will not be role playing. You will choose who you are and let yourself feel and want what you feel and want. So I have a scenario, uh, which is part of where I feel humble because the scenario is so resembling what you were talking about, the process that you did for two days and all of that. that um, but I, it, in the space of time that I had, I couldn't think of a better one. So the scenario that I came in here with is um, the people who will be here are an IT department within a company generic company, it doesn't matter what the company is because an IT department is an IT department. And you were entrusted um, um, with developing a new database and website system for the company and you just heard that there's a 20% cut in your budget while you are in the middle of the project. And, and the question is how to respond to that. That's the scenario that I have, and I will drop it. If anybody has a real life scenario that you have that you can explain with this few number of words. If anybody has one, I really would prefer it. Yeah. Well, it's specific to my work environment, but Great. It, 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 it's more or less, you know, sadly that same thing if we're in a very difficult financial situation. We're looking to, looking to have to cut staff. Having, having to cut. So I, I, pr I prefer mine because uh, there's no pre-decision that it's going to be staff or cutting staff or what. There can be all kinds of right. ways well, that. I should say it could be a, to, cut, to cut in general. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a similar, it's a very similar thing. And I think part of why I like this one is people don't need to know anything about the nature of the business. You can easily imagine. So what I would like is a few people who are willing to sit here and I'll, I'll tell you the criteria that I have for who I want. First of all, I want people who are willing to be videotaped. Um, <laughs> we are considering putting, we haven't talked about it. Uh, Roxy asked me to ask other people and I forgot. I don't track things very well in my head. Uh, but we are considering the idea of putting all these videos on YouTube, hoping that they will go viral with the information. Um, so. Uh, whether or not that will happen, we will decide later. But I want people to sit in the circle who are willing to be um, on YouTube, if that's what ends up happening. That's one criterion. And the second is I have a preference for people with less NVC experience, because 
um, I find that NVC people who are experienced often have a really hard time not speaking already in needs language. And, and, and that, that will re reduce the effectiveness of what I want to show. Uh, however, if, you, if you're if very experienced and you know that you don't have this trouble, you're also wel welcome. <laughs> So, any volunteers? Is it possible to turn this off altogether? What? No, what I mean is then it will be okay to turn it on if I need it. Okay. Stand by. Thank you. So I would like one person. Yes, thank you. A couple more people. Thank you. I would like one person who is uh, willing to be the department head. That person needs to be identified so everybody knows what the power structure in the room is. You can do it? You can do it? OK, great. What's your name? Chris. Chris, Chris is the department head. So um, this is going to be only partially effective in the sense that I don't, you know, to try to take the time to define everybody's roles and all of that would be more than I wanted do right now, so we're going to let go of roles. It's like we have a very simple structure. Um, we have a department head and everybody else is together. Now, the, um, the, um, one of the things that I want to highlight in doing this is that um, I'm imagining that most people here who are working in organizations are not CEOs. And so in, I imagine that the people who are working in organizations are mostly in organizations that are based on a hierarchical power over structure. And that you don't have to have the entire structure of the organization change. It's enough from you, from wherever it is that you have the authority, down, outward in your level, and up that you operate on a power with consciousness. You can do that no matter where you are in the organization. It takes more skill to do it upwards than to do it downwards or sideways. Um, and and be, this is not a, a presentation about <coughs> power, so I'm not going to get into why that is. Um, and so all of you are very lucky because your department head, Chris, decided that even though the, the budget cut was landed from the top and he has nothing that he can do about it to change it, I mean, he can quit, but that's the kind of organization. You don't like the budget, you don't have to work here. Be familiar with those <coughs> kinds of things. So, but how he cuts the budget is always within his authority because the people on the top, no matter how hierarchical it is, if he delivers the 20% cut in budget, they don't care if, they keep, if he keeps everyone. So I want you to take now a moment to take a position inside of you, your idea of um, how you want to cut the budget and what's important to you about it and uh, um, whatever thoughts and judgments you have, anything that is true for you in the role that you are. Don't script it. Just let yourself sink into it. And, um, and so I want to just name the three phases that I see. Um, the, and sometimes you don't need to have three phases. Like this afternoon, I want to do this live. It's all, it's all going to be in, in one process. Sometimes you can just go into a situation and make a decision on the fly. In other words, have the proposals be created on the fly and all of that. In a situation like this, it's extremely unlikely that you can come into a meeting, you know, like a one or two hour meeting, and, and it will all be solved. I mean, it took you two days. Um, so 
In, in that case, I want to do it in three steps. The first step is to gather the needs. Just gather the, the needs and what the needs are. And the, the key thing for me here is that I uncouple the needs from the person who expressed them. And I am going to be creating a shared needs list. Is, is it clear what I mean? Yes. So I'm never, I'm going to do everything I can do to remember to say, you know, these are the needs that we have, rather than to say, so uh, Bob has this need. Because every time I say Bob has this need, it means that the other people, um, um, consciously or unconsciously, drop some of their responsibility for that need. D does that make sense? If I say we have this need and this need and this need without saying who is the person, then everybody is invited by my saying it, invited into shared ownership of all the needs. And that's one of the key things that will drive the process is everybody owning all the needs. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, yeah. I don't have a question. I just misplaced my name tag, so for it, I'm Julia. Ah, oh. um, <laughs> yes. Do you teach that when you do the facilitation, or do you let your demonstration of that do the... I'd, uh, I'd like my demonstration. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't teach anything. The only thing that I, that I do when I do this is I, um, if, it's a, if it's at the decision-making place, is I, I make a contract about time. And, and we'll, I'll demonstrate that in the, this afternoon. I, I promise people that within X amount of time, I will either, either deliver them a decision or I, deliver, I will deliver clarity about why the decision cannot be made now. And I, this is why I say I have chutzpah. I haven't tried this in the big world. I've only done this either in simulations or in NVC groups. Actually, one time that I, I did it. OK, just to, to undo my humbleness, I was in a <laughs> conference, in a conference that had uh, 250 people. And there was, it was the last day, and there was a scheduling havoc. And some people wanted to have an extra open space session, and some people didn't, and da 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 da. And I very boldly said to the organizers, give me the microphone, and within 10 minutes, I will, I, this group will have a decision about the schedule. And that happened. So it, I, I do believe it's a very powerful process. So, so I'm going to, um, that's the first step, is, is uh, creating a shared needs list. I want to put it here so that in case I want to turn on um, the PowerPoint, I can still get here. Um, then I want to choose a smaller group to come up with a proposal. And that can either be you know, a few small groups working in parallel to create parallel proposals or one. The key thing is to create a subgroup that holds the polarity that exists in the larger group. So I pick people that I know have different or opposing positions, and I ideally pick the people who feel most strongly about their position, whatever it is. Because one other thing that I have learned in, in my thinking about this whole process is that most people will go with whatever happens. Most of the time, most people will go with whatever happens. If they know that their needs matter, then they don't have to you know, like create resistance or opposition. Some people won't. <laughs> I'm one of them. I know all about it. So um, I, I know that if you get the people who feel passionately, one way or the other, to all come up with something that they are all on board with, it's very likely that most other people will follow or that you're very close to that. There may be a few more objections, but you will be close. Yeah? In this exercise, is it an option to address the problem by providing an alternative solution as opposed to, in addition to... What do you mean by alternative solution? Well, what if the group came up with a way to generate 50% more revenue stream, more savings that, that they wouldn't have to cut? Sure. 
so so you can cut the budget or increase revenue stream. Yeah, you either cut expenses by twenty percent or you Figure show out another way. Yeah, uh, but you have to deliver twenty percent less expenses to upper management. Or a choice. I, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. And is this our whole department? Or yes, this is your whole department. Uh, for needs gathering, I want the largest group possible. For proposal, I want the smallest group possible. Just because of the dynamics of you know how many people talk about different things, uh, it takes forever. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do a little dip into the needs gathering and a little dip into the proposal gathering, and then we will imagine that we have a proposal and I want to spend the bulk of the time on working at the, at the process of trying to make the decision because that's, that's where it, it gets uh, the diciest. So, um, and remember, uh, Chris is the department head, and so what I am conscious of as facilitator um, and there is, you know, there are changes that would have to be in place for Chris to be the facilitator. It's possible, but it gets a little more complicated, so I don't want to get into that right now. As the facilitator, I hold the power structure in the room. And what that means is that how I hold it is um, I up the significance of any view that opposes him even mildly. What I mean by that is um, um, I, I heard a very powerful definition of power, the kind of traditional power or even not traditional power. Power means you very rarely get to hear no. And so you understand why. And so what I want to do is to increase the chances that other people can say no. Otherwise, it's not really inclusive. So I, 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 I do that in terms of how I listen to what people say and how I emphasize or believe them when they say they're OK or not. It's, it's all very subtle. I don't do that by directly challenging the power structure. That doesn't, that doesn't work. There's no need for it, and it doesn't work. OK. I just have one more question. How yes. long will it take? Because I'm aware that I need to make a, a phone call in 30 minutes. So uh, I wonder if, if, if another person would benefit. Actually, this is perfect, because these things happen. <laughs> these things just happen, you know? <laughs> OK, uh, can I have a marker? I don't know where the markers are. Thank you. OK, now comes the nervous moment. Now what do I do? I create I did all this setup, and <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm on display to start. Um, so I don't have like a preset methodology in this size group. I, what I'm most moved to do is to just go around the circle and hear from each person where they are in terms of their response to the budget cuts. And I am, um, so I'm going to go in and out of the process. So within the process, this is what I'm going to say. So I'm, I'm here to facilitate a process in which uh, at the end there will be a decision about how to cut the 20% of the budget that Chris was told uh, this department needs to make. Uh, I, I got that right. It's a 20% cut, yes? Yes. Um, and at, uh, for the first, um, for the beginning of this process, what I want to do is I want to hear from each person just to get a sense of where you are in response to this um, command. Um, <coughs> we could Can we also share our need around our decision? You don't have NVC. You're not an NVC person. This is a regular workplace. Can I ask a technical question? What percentage of the budget is, is um, salaries and what percentage are other costs? It doesn't matter. I don't know. Well, that's our first need. We need to know. What is it? So I, um, I, do you want to uh, join the circle? Do you want me to? 
Um, yeah, there's an empty chair. Are you willing? <laughs> if, uh, if you have lots of questions, I think what I would rather do is have you play out the different things that you ask about rather than ask about them. That's, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. OK. Oh, let's, let's pass the mic. Thank you. So who would like to start? And Try not to bring the two mics close together, because sometimes that creates a split. Yes. So I understand we're gathering meat. I didn't say this. <laughs> I didn't say this. See, this is the thing. All that I said up until now was said here in this presentation. Right now we are in the organization. You know nothing about needs. You know nothing about phases, nothing about any of this. I'm just asking you here. I am facilitating your process of making a decision. And I'm asking you where you are about the budget. And you don't know NVC. Chris probably knows some NVC because he invited me in. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So, um, I have, I, I just have a feeling that they don't respect what we do, um, and if we do the budget cut, I'm, 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 I'm very okay to help, but I'd like them to see the effort and to make us also, make it visible and for us, to us that we made this effort and so that we see that they value our work. Thank you. So um, don't pass it on yet because I want to make sure that I got what's key to you. What I'm getting from you is whatever decision is made, you want it to reflect the quality of trust and respect and appreciation for the work that you do. So that's what I'm going to write. Yeah, that's fine. And sometimes I will write them separate. Sometimes I will write them together. I'm not even going to try to be precise because I want to move through this quickly. I may not even go through the whole circle. Uh, OK, thanks. Uh, just a second. I, did I get that right? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, do why can't we just cut the marketing budget 20%? We have a loyal customer following. Um, it doesn't even have to be so much about the corporation. Just so what <coughs> you want the, the budget cuts to happen in another department? Well, I'm just raising the idea to see, yeah. yeah. What if it's not even about, see, it's not about needs. It's like, okay, we have a loyal customer base. Let's just cut marketing. Mike, you the use the mic. Uh, uh, so it, the way that I understand it from Chris, this is not optional. Yeah, they're, they're already cutting in, in marketing. Okay. We have to cut in this department. So given that the, there has to be a cut in this department, I, I just would like to know what your position is about this. So see, here I was using, um, I was explicitly using the power structure to get information. That, that's how it goes. So now that you know, do you want us to come back to you later? Right, yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, I, I just need this uh, cut to happen, because uh, if I don't, I'll probably get fired. Uh, I don't want to get promoted instead of getting fired. <laughs> you can imagine saying that. Uh, well, sorry. I, mean, I was trying to be as un NBC as possible. But, but <laughs> can you imagine, as a, as a department <laughs> head, saying this to your employees? I, 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 I just i am questioning that. Sure. That's uh, the truth that happens. It may be the truth. I don't know that it's a truth that will be shared. So I, I, I want you to kind of like embody. This is really a room in the corporation. You are the department head of IT. Sure. Are you going to say this to your employees? I doubt it. No, probably not. So I want you to really enter the role and just be, don't play what you think is true, but just sure. really be it. So you, um, uh, Chris, I want to hear from you now. Yeah. You've been landed this uh, significant task of, redu of cutting the budget in 20%. Where are you at about that? Uh, but yeah, I, I just want to make sure that it, that it happens in a, a timely manner and that, um, that everybody feels OK about it. Great. So, so what, what I want to see if I got that. What, it, what is important to you is efficiency in the process and a quality of uh, shared buy-in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Would it work for the? What, uh, how did it? How did the mic come here? <laughs> I, I, um, there's something about um, you doing things when I'm writing and not saying <laughs> that is not working for me. It, it's too many um, details. Um, so somebody else write. Um, Okay, I, I need I need simplicity for a moment. Yes. Would you like to take notes for you? Uh, I, yes, um, I, I'm happy for uh, uh, no uh, Roxy. Just because just because Roxy knows my mind very well. <laughs> We've worked together for years. Um, just for clarity, so you want us to go around, or what was the? Yes, I I want to go around, and if you want the mic uh, ahead of time. Uh, 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 is there a specific reason? Are you wanting to respond to what was being said? A proposal. I, I, I would rather wait until we, we came to you because I really want to hear from everyone. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, this is one of those things, you see? Did you see that that yes was not really a yes? yes. See, now if I was role play, I'd say, Stan, I've worked with you a long time and I really want you to work on your patience right now. Um, so, um, so I would like, I'd like to um, ask you all, in the context of this presentation, I would like to ask you all to not give me other facilitation challenges. Because I can work with all of this, it will just take us more time. The, the, this, is, this is really, in terms of facilitator, this is a no-brainer. But I, I'm not, this is not a general facilitation class. Are, are you willing all to agree to this? I, I, now, if you have an opposition to what somebody says or whatever, and, and it feels passionate in you and you want to talk out of turn, please do that. Hey, Nikki, what was the question? It helped me to know what you're choosing to leave out of the circle. What Dale said? Yes, what Dale said is, uh, you know, I can't stand your impatience, some version of that. Mm. You need to work on your impatience. Okay, so uh, I'm back to, so I get a sense that it's actually, um, you're willing to wait, but it's not really what you want. Is it important for you to say the proposal now? Well, maybe it's a solution for the budget cut. Um, so here's, uh, here's my thought. The reason I want to wait is I want to really know what's important to everyone and for it, any proposal to really address all of these things. Well, I had something important to... So what's important to you? Um, Chris, what I um, have an important thing, I need to be off for two weeks to leave town. And I had a proposal that a 20% cut would look maybe like everybody take a rotating two-week vacation. And there's 10 of us here, two people, two weeks. That would cut it immediately. Uh, thank you. The, the, the thing that I get, um, I am not feeling ready to work with a proposal quite yet, but the principle that this proposal I speaks to. I had a need to, for time off. The principle that this proposal speaks to that I want to check to see if that is a principle is that you want the burden to be shared. Is that true? And I needed to leave town. Okay. But I, yeah. I, I want my job, but I asking Chris for, you know, I, I'm willing to take time off. So you are volunteering to take time off, uh, but it, it, to me that is separate from how the budget is going to be cut. So I want to just take the principle out of your proposal and then see if we can work with everybody's concerns to come up with a proposal that addresses all of them. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Did I get it accurately that, that sharing the burden of the, of the cuts is, is something that's important to you? That it not fall on any one person or one part of the department more than other? So I don't get my time off. <laughs> so you, it's really important for you to have time off. Yeah. I get that, and I would like to put that separate from the question of the budget. Are you willing to make that separation? Right. Thank you. So I, I think that it may be important for you and Chris to talk afterwards about how you can get time off, whether or not it's part of the budget. We'll, we'll, uh, are you okay with that? Yeah. I just want to check if I got the principle accurately, that you want whatever cuts are made to be uh, shared in a way that, has, uh, that shares the burden. Yeah? Okay. 
Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I think that you were next. Um, Judith, do you have a question? Oh, I was just going to say, like, to guess to him in that moment, um, is it that you're really wanting life-work balance? I don't want to get into it. Th this is the thing. I want to keep the focus on this. And this is the NVC thing that happens. I want to name it, is that people get uh, so enamored by the idea of empathy that they just go with wherever the energy is. And, you know, there's so much pain there. Tons. I'm aware of it. I'm choosing not to go there because I want to keep the focus. Thank you. Just for clarity, I'm just saying that in service of the budgetary situation, because what I'm getting from him is that he's wanting consideration of that need in the context of a reduced budget. So it, it's not either or. It's that they have some mm. synergistic um, maybe he wants that considered in the... That may be the case. I didn't, I didn't read it like this. And my reading right now is, because you're not seeing his face. My okay. reading right yeah. now is that just about anything that I would say right now would only get a qualified yes. And I don't want to continue because I want to um, uh, keep the group engaged. Cool. This is not a um, uh, self-help group. This is a department facing a serious problem. I understood it differently. I understood it as a solution. Uh, offer. Yes, he offered uh, a solution. Okay. And I took the principle out of the solution. This is premature to offer a solution. A solution okay. that comes too early um, um, reduces other people's trust that their needs can be included in the solution. Okay. So I want to desolutionize it and just take the principle out of it. Okay. Um, so I, uh, right now, because I want to m move forward, I think I've shown enough of how I do this. You see what I mean about having one list? Um, is there anybody who is sitting uh, on, uh, on a controversy of any kind? In, yeah, so I, wa I want to hear from you. I'm, this, I'm saying this out of the role. Uh, oh, out of the role. So out of the role, meaning oh, no. Oh, no. it's Bob's turn. I don't want to do everybody's turn. I, I just want to uh, hear if there's controversy and then just hear all the needs named. In other words, I'm inviting you to kind of like be one foot in and one foot out of the role and inviting you now to tell me the best understanding that you have of your needs so that we can move to phase two. Well, I, hmm? Go ahead, Bob. What's, what? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do right now. Um, are, you want to hear what my needs are? In needs language? At this point, yes. Oh. Um, Just uh, not because that's what I would do, but because I want to actually gather yeah. the needs and be able to move to the next phase. I think, I think no. with what we did so far, it's enough of a demonstration. There will be a lot of variety, but it's the same principle. Well, well it may be the same as what's there, shared cost. Great. It's, it's like um, equality. There's something about everybody shares in this equal, equal somehow. Okay, so now I want to do to uh, uh, illustrate one of the other principles. I am interested in hearing all the needs. I am not committed to hearing all the people. This, this flies in the face of how many people do this. I don't have to hear everybody's physical voice in order for all the needs to be included. And the way that I manage that as facilitator is I say, is there anything else that anybody wants to add to the board? that's not already there. And then I get the everything without having to hear everyone. It's so tiring to hear five people say the same thing. It doesn't take us anywhere new. Yes, Dale. And speak to the mic. There. I have the, uh, I understand that we need to cut the budget by 20. I understand that it's a mandate of upper management. And I understand the impact of that in this group it, to our team, which I don't want to be diminished because I think it's a good team. I have a need to, to I want to look at an alternative to cutting the budget. And I think we, I'd like to offer upper management their 20%, but I'd also like to offer them another way to go that may satisfy their need, you know, their, their um, objective in cutting the budget by 
So what uh, the principle that I'm getting from you is that you want innovative thinking. Right, I'm not buying the proposition of upper management. Yeah, innovative thinking to address the challenge and a, a willingness to explore all options. Right, and I'd like to focus, and then, then second, I'd like to focus on ways that, that the hard costs of the department as opposed to the, the soft costs which are our, which would impact the team and its functionality. Uh, same, uh, do you? Let's, 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 let's buy computers cheaper. Okay, so, so you want to prioritize um, uh, care for the humans in the department. Right. Do, do you see the move that I'm making? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it totally in, in a practical language. I'm not saying, oh, so you have a need for da 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 because that language just doesn't fly. But I'm taking it from specific strategy to needs. And in, in a contextual sense of, of, a, of a business culture. Anything else that anybody wants to add to this list? Yes. Okay. I, I want creativity in our solution. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to be OK. I want agreement in whatever we decide to do. So I want to see, um, because I, uh, uh, we have here a, cert, a shared buy-in and innovative thinking. So if there is something that is neither of those, I didn't get it. So can you try to say differently? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm fine with those. OK, thank you. So this sometimes happens, that uh, somebody thinks they have something new to say, and it isn't, and I want to check. And before I close, uh, you have something? Well, I just got hired into the job yesterday, so I'm really nervous about what's going to happen, and I'm just concerned about the confidentiality of various people's needs, that there's appropriate ways to handle that when decisions are getting made. Um, I, I'm not confident that I understand what you mean by confidentiality of people's needs. Can you explain it to me in a different way? Just that I think everyone comes with a particular story, and I'm just worried about, given I don't know any of these people here, I'd be a little uncomfortable about sharing anything with them. So I just need to know that there's a way Got it. For so everyone it's, can, it's, can have some safety around that. Okay. So you so you want a, um, a, a place that holds with with care, everybody's personal circumstances. Correct. That's Thank you. Additional? Yeah. Um, I'd like to see um, us thinking of this also as an opportunity in terms of, uh, instead of as a problem. Because, for instance, what you said, hey, why isn't this maybe an opportunity? And maybe also mm -hmm. um, enjoy finding mm -hmm. um, Yeah. OK. So I want to check before I close if there is anyone who usually doesn't tend to speak up and who thinks that maybe what you have to offer is not so important. And still, if it's not on the board, I would like to hear it. I'm not sure this is different, but um, I'd like to make sure that we all leave, that everybody feels fulfilled with what their work is. Mm -hmm. And so if we do ultimately come to the decision that somebody has to go, that um, that, that person find other fulfilling work and mm -hmm. that we support them in doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the, so the, what I'm getting is within a care for everybody's job satisfaction, whether they stay or leave. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Um, this is the list, and now I would, um, we, we d because we right, went straight to needs, I don't actually know where the lines of controversy may exist here. So I'm going to kind of like let go of trying to figure that out. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm wanting um, just to know who feels very strongly about the position that you have, Dale, I think you do. And who else feels strongly about whatever it matters to you. You do. And who else? I want a couple more people. And you? And, uh, and you. And let, I, I, let's assume that we covered all the different camps and positions because we didn't work enough with that. So now it's uh, Julia, Bob, Dale, and Anne. You are the, going to be the group that will craft a proposal to present to this larger group. And the reason for that is that I have a sense that between the four of you, you really hold all of these needs 
on behalf of everyone. And um, I also... Do you say that to this little group? Yes. Okay. Yes. At some point, I start introducing the word needs without ever explaining what it means, without ever making a big deal out of it, just using it, not up front. But at some point, I start referring to this as the list of needs. It's fine. Um, and so, I, I, let me just finish this. I, I trust that between the four of you, you hold, um, uh, you know, you represent all of these needs and can hold them on behalf of the whole, and that there is enough controversy within this group that if you work it out, you can probably come up with a proposal that will address all of this. Because that's the key for a decision to be, you know, several people talked about wanting there to be a shared buy-in. For there to be a shared buy-in, it has to address as many of these as possible. And I just want to reiterate, there is an alternative way of doing it, which is to take the group and divide it into small groups, also multi-representative as much as possible. And each small group comes up with a proposal. Either, either one is fine. The second one is more resource consuming. Before we break, can I ask a question of the group? Mm -hmm. We're not breaking, but. Well, before we yeah. go into the subgroup. How many people on the team would be, um, want extra time for their lifestyle? Like, what's your name? Sam. Sam. Like Sam does. So Sam wants. How many people want, you know, like this time, you know, want more time for their personal life, like the way that Stan does? So. Oh. Okay. okay. So that's information for you. Is there any other information that any of the people in the proposal group need from the larger group to be able to work on creating a proposal? And I'd like to ask exactly, I think for me the opposite question, because I think that's two opposite positions in my head. How many of you are interested in, let's say, the model of, let's say, raising, um, prof raising um, Profitability or profitability, but let's say um, revenue. Revenue um, instead, instead of cutting instead of cutting costs. Okay, okay. so um, now. And now the, the, is the is the creative phase of where these four people come together, and really the the main thing is holding this as the container. You know whatever idea anybody comes up with, you match it up. The needs become a criteria for the proposal. So I, um, I don't want to take the time now because this is the least structured part in any event. There is not like a whole lot that I can tell you that you don't know about how to do this. Um, I just want to know if there's anyone either in this group or in the larger group that has a concrete proposal in a form that can be presented to the large group for the decision-making phase. Does anybody have that? Okay. Anne. I, I, I think let's figure out who wants time off and get the, the data, the numbers, what that really looks like. And the time off would be unpaid. And so that person can then, each, each one of us can figure out what works for us. Um, and so that you'd have steps, and then, um, and then also ask the question about whether there is um, whether there is anybody that is not satisfied in their work that would want to be doing something else. Okay, so so your your proposal is to uh, do a piecemeal thing. You know, first see who wants uh, unpaid right. time off, who might want to move to another department, and then see if there's anything left. Right, iterative. Yeah, and let's say that there is that there is uh, that, that covered ten percent. What do you want to do with the other ten percent? Exploring all options. So this is, I often more and more come to believe that part of the difficulty in making decisions is that people think in terms of a full thing or not, and that really um, good decisions that address many needs. Are, are hybrid. They have, uh, you know, richness, uh, complexity. Some of this, some of that. Instead of either or. So that's that's what I'm seeing in yours. Um, we'll see if there is shared buy-in, but it's important th that there be. Mm -hmm. um, I am concerned that it doesn't address the shared cost and burden. Well, the last part of it is that. Um 
I mean, there, there's a certain amount of choice that if people want time off, they get other needs met. And that if there's, there is, let's say there's 5% left, is to, is to cut everybody's salary by 5%. Um, so the concern that I have, and I do say this as facilitator, I don't necessarily wait for somebody who holds the need to say it because if I catch it before they say it, they feel more held. Mm -hmm. Does that make intuitive sense? So my concern is that the people who are choosing to take time off essentially are getting a pay cut and the people who are not choosing to take time off don't get a pay cut and that that might be a concern. For some, for some of those people. So how do you imagine addressing that? I would ask if that was a concern. And if it is? If it is, um, I would want input on what the solution would be. Or maybe we do a 5% off the board at first, you know, so everybody loses 5%. And then, so that could be the first step, and then go to how, who wants their time off and less pay. OK. Um, I, I understand that. I don't know if this will fly or not, but this is a perfect situation because it's, it's kind of like we have a proposal and now we can bring it to the large, large group and see what happens because this, this, is, this is the key. Um, this is where kind of like the rubber hits the road is how do you actually make the decision? All of this <coughs> was preparatory. Um, so now uh, we are back in the group and uh, in the large group. And uh, we don't have Alejandra, was her name? Oh, She's there's 10% on now. Well, <laughs> 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 that was all right. Yeah. So, are we, is, is, so is that the proposal we're going with? Or I'm confused, it's process. I, I, we skipped the proposal making phase. Okay. As a group, I was just trying to get a proposal, and I got ants. I don't. It, it's. I, I'm, okay. I'm assuming that the four of you agreed on it, just, just because I want the efficiency of the lar the larger group. Okay. Can you can you live with that? Sure. Thank you. I'll take his sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and part of it is if you remember earlier I was talking about uh, willingness uh, versus what the need is. Um, at that place, um, at the original place with Stan, I, 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 w I didn't want to take his yes because it was a much more open-ended place in the process, um, both in terms of within the role play and within what I was holding it as the time of the presentation. Right at this point, um, I am willing to have somebody else stretch further towards me in order to make what I want to make happen, happen. That is the key, is I check how important is something to me as the person running a process relative, uh, and the more important it is to me, the more I'm willing for other people to stretch towards me. Think about it, it's a very odd way of framing it. I'm willing to have people stretch towards me um, when something is more important to me. Is that, is that framing uh, resonating? Can you explain what's important to you? I mean, right you now, it. what's important to me, right in this moment, me, Mickey, what's important to me, is to give the group a taste of the actual decision-making process. And so I am willing to take a um, um, equivocal yes mm -hmm. rather than engage with him further, which would give me less yeah. time for that. Thank you. So uh, here we are. So here's the proposal in writing, reading it, but you all heard what the proposal is. So I would like to know um, how many people you've pre presented the proposal, and the four of you are obviously uh, going to say yes to it, but how many people like this proposal? Would you raise your hand if you like this proposal? Say it again. What's the proposal is what Anne said before, which is, um, uh, you know, uh, some people take time off, uh, some people take a uh, 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 pay cut, uh, uh, some people leave who are willing to leave, and then if there's uh, more um, of the budget that's necessary, there's a combination of plans to generate more revenue and whatever needs to be pay cut gets divided by everyone. 
right? Yeah, I understood that the, the, the essence of it was that it's flexible. So not everybody, let's say, takes time off and a pay cut. But if you want to take time off, then you'll get the pay cut. Mm -hmm. Whereas somebody else yeah. will take your back. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to get into the details of this right okay. now because I'm really, really eager to just get into the process. So how many people like this proposal? Would you raise your hand? Okay, so n now comes the point of, the, um, um, of how much time do I have? The time that I have to make the decision is also going to affect what I call the threshold of willingness. So I, I want to demonstrate what I mean by the threshold of willingness by asking you different questions. So um, how many people, and this may even be the original people that agreed with the proposal, how many people have any degree, even a mild degree of discomfort with this proposal? Raise your hand. Okay, keep your hands up because I want everybody to see how many. Just put them all the way up so everybody can see. Okay, um, how many people have significant discomfort with this proposal? Would you raise your hand? That's fewer hands, you see? And it depends on what I want. Sometimes, if there's even mild discomfort about something, I want to take it off the table. It depends on the circumstances. Sometimes, um, having uh, you know, three pr people with significant discomfort um, I still want to press forward. I think, I can't remember if it was three or four. How many people have um, strong enough discomfort that you want us to air your, um, air your concerns? That's fewer. I'm, I keep raising the threshold. And what I mean by threshold, think of it literally as a physical barrier that people have to cross in order to say no. How many people have significant enough concerns, discomfort with this, that, that they want their concerns aired? Thank you. Uh, let me keep raising it. Um, how many people are, are, um, are absolutely unwilling to live with this? Um, Just a part of it. OK, and I want to check with the two of you, uh, are you? so unwilling to live, with, to live with it that if we accept this proposal, you're going to resign? No. So I want, as facilitator and especially as department head, I want to have in me the willingness to use this threshold. It feels like it's non-NVC. It's not an imposition. I'm asking for information. This is information that helps me know what I want to do. do. Do you see the difference? Now that I know this, I'm OK, I can check. This is a very high cost. It's a very high cost, but they're not going to resign. So it may be in certain conditions that I will move forward with a decision knowing that they are really, really, really at high cost. That means to me several things. One is that I anticipate challenges along the way. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the cost of their emotional well-being in the moment. It's like the, the decision doesn't feel robust if I accept it at this level. The other is that whatever other decision we need to make tomorrow, I don't want it to be at cost to them. Tomorrow they get priority on some other decision because their trust that their needs matter is on the line. Do you, do you feel that? that? That if I tomorrow make another decision that they have to stretch so hard to accept? It's like, what am I here for? Yes. In the, in the moment of your facilitating and someone says, I hate so much I would resign, mm -hmm. do you No, if they say I would resign, um, OK, so it, let's say that, um, what's your name? Lenore. Let's say that Lenore said, I would resign if this proposal is accepted. Mm -hmm. The decision about this, first of all, I check with Chris. If, the, if she says that, I said, uh, Chris, are you willing to go forward with this decision at the cost of losing Lenore? Brutally, fiercely honest. Mm -hmm. 
that's what we need to know. Blocking. The degree of willingness. I focus on the degree of willingness. It's, a, it's a energetically completely different from focusing on blocking. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Um, um, w- one more thing. I don't only ask Chris. I first ask Chris, but I then ask the whole group, since this is a collaborative decision. Mm-hmm. See, if Chris says no, there's no, point, there's no need to ask the whole group. But if, if Chris says, yes, I'm willing to live with that, that's important information also for the whole group, then I ask the group, are you all willing to make this decision knowing that you will lose Lenore? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's truthful. So um, I want to pause for a second because I, um, I want to um, also um, illustrate how I work with the objections. So I know that the two of them have very, very strong objections. Can you hold your question on uh, how I want, I want to work with your objections? Because what I understand objections to mean is that one of two things. Either we accidentally left out a need or misunderstood a need, or there is a new need that is surfacing now through this process that was not conscious, consciously held before. So, Lenore, could you t- say in brief what concerns you have about this proposal? In brief, I Microphone. Oh, microphone. And, and I want to say before she speaks, I am willing, and I've seen it happen, that she's the only one objecting. I, I know you're objecting, but I'm, I'm just saying for the, for, that she's the only one objecting. She has an alternate proposal that people... No, that's an assumption. She may not have an objection. No, no, I know. I'm saying okay. it's possible. I have seen it happen that somebody has an objection, has an alternate idea that works for them, doesn't work as well for everybody else, but everybody else is willing to go with, and we will go with that. Because this is not about majority or minority. This is about maximizing willingness. Where the willingness is, that's where we go. So this is not democracy, this is not consensus, this is not its its own thing. I don't know uh, what to call it. So um, I've been here a long time. I have, I have been willing to, when we've had put ups, it closer. When we've had ups and downs, I have been willing to flex, keep it closer. Flex my schedule so that you know we've worked more. We've, we've uh, you know, I felt that I have given everything that I possibly can to this organization. And, and I'm feeling right now with looking at a possible um, solution that I'm not comfortable with, with taking a pay cut, um, that we need to look further and we need to, to dig deeper. Uh, so so this, is, this is a classic moment, because uh, look, uh, you know, dig deeper is, is not going to work with the efficiency that Chris wanted. You see that? And, and th- this, is, this is a very critical facilitation choice point. Um, so, um, so I'm going to speak to that. Because if you remember, what I want to do is I want to get Lenore to trust that her needs matter. And I want her to connect, in this case, with Chris's need for efficiency, but not as Chris's need, with the need for efficiency. See, I violated my own thing. I said Chris's need, and, and it immediately polarizes. I, I want her to connect with that need, to really open her heart to that significance, and then she might shift. She might shift because it may not be the ideal thing. So, so the distinction is between somebody's preference and what somebody is willing to live with. And when we if we were ever to try to maximize preference, we're doomed. Uh, and that's one way of looking at, on some level, what the culture is trying to do. You know, like, have everybody get everything that they want. It doesn't work. But if we focus on willingness, what I'm willing to live with, then we can start moving. 
So, um, so I, Lenore, here is my concern. I heard in amongst all the needs that we are holding, there's also efficiency. And I'm wondering if you're connected with that desire for efficiency in making this decision. I'm thinking more I'm thinking more of the efficiency of myself and not of the efficiency of the whole. Thank you. So, so you see, that's part of why. That's part of why. So I, again, I, I work with that either to the point where she shifts or to the point where I sense that from hearing, that through hearing her, other people might shift. So let's say that I heard her, because I want to demonstrate how that might, let's say that I heard her, you know, kind of like speak to some of the, let's say, values and principles that this department operates by. You know, like we have such a sense, I'm, I'm making it up on your behalf, such a sense of commitment to thorough process to exploring all options in all the way that we design uh, software here. And I really want to apply these principles to the way that we make this decision. Can you imagine that hearing this, some people might shift around the efficiency? So I'm, I'm curious if, you, if hearing this, you're, I'm asking you out of the role. In, I'm, this is not part of the process. I'm just checking with you sitting here. When you heard that, did you feel a shift in you as the department head? A willingness to take more time for the decision. Uh, yeah. That's all. Because that's really what she's speaking for, is taking more time so more options can be explored. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need any support in how to present it to upper management, why this department needs more time? Yeah. So then, you know, some people here would help him. It's, it's like if you just keep looking for where the openness is and where the willingness is, it will all come together. I think I want to pause here. It's not like uh, we are done, but I want to keep some time for questions. Yes. I just wanted to share a, um, what happened with me. Uh, then, then take the microphone, please. Um, I just want to share my, um, I am, <laughs> I'm sensing an interesting reaction, and that is that I start to, um, let's say, sympathize with all of the needs, because, for instance, the, what I was missing here was the, the need, which is also on the board, for innovative thinking was not addressed. So, mm -hmm. And I, that's how I understood, because we sort of jumped into this solution, and that's it, and then if, if you're yeah. against it, you're not efficient. But, yeah. So what I'm saying is the beauty of finding that, although I'm totally for efficiency myself, I thought, wait a minute, you know, you're not being, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's the key, the shared ownership yeah. of all the needs. Shared ownership, then, then it's like the, the whole group. It has, it has to maximize these. Uh, it, it, we may agree <coughs> as a group that we can't find something that is shared cost. So we let go of one need. That may happen, but the aim is to <coughs> Uh, address as many of these as we possibly can. So um, I want to um, open to a few minutes of questions. But before this, I'm, I, uh, I, especially because of how it started, I am curious to get one small piece of feedback, which is um, how many of you have a sense that you, you learn something new that you imagine could make a difference in the contexts where you are. Whether or not you know how to do it already, but that if you knew how to do it could make a difference in the context where you are. Would you raise your hand if that's true for you? Thank you. So, questions? So thank you for demonstrating how this works when you have one small group go off and come up with a proposal. How do you handle it if, say, you had three small groups? Yes. Off? How do you process the proposals that came out? I, I, I basically, thank you. Um, I, I like that question. It, it, it helps me bring out something that I wanted to say, which is I basically uh, get a temperature read for all the different proposals. 
a temperature read, meaning how many people like it, how many people don't like it, how many people strongly don't like it that you know, really want something without getting any of the information, just seeing the numbers. And then I bet on the one that has the least strong objection. Doesn't matter um, um, what else is going on, just that has the least strong objection. Because then I have, it, it's again, it's the same principle of maximizing willingness. Okay, with temperature, temperature and objection and uh, efficiency, maybe we can do a little conservation and turn off this air conditioning. It's feeling cold in here. <laughs> As we did that, I'll do it. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, my question is about not. At checking in with each person mm -hmm. at the beginning, because I found, especially in hierarchical groups, people are so eager to have to matter. Oh, I, I was, I was jumping over it because of the context of presentation. You, 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 oh, okay. you, you missed something. I, I was saying, you know, I was going through the circle and saying this is enough of a demonstration, but I would go through the whole, the whole circle if it's a small group. If it is a large group. I have people talk to each other, and then I hear only the different themes, and I just write them. And it doesn't matter to me who says it. I just want to make sure all the needs are on the table. I don't want to hear from everyone necessarily. In a small group, it's, it doesn't compromise efficiency. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, as the person who played, played the role of the new hire, um, I'm just kind of curious of how, how you as a facilitator assess your knowledge of the group to know when it comes to willingness, you know, within the individual, how willing they're going to be willing to go with you when they just can't know the safety of a situation to feel. The less power you have, the more I would uh, doubt your yes. Uh -huh. Okay. The less power you have, the more I will doubt your yes. Mm -hmm. So let's say if a woman says yes and a man says yes, I will doubt the woman's yes more. If I know nothing else about them. If you are um, a male clerk versus a CEO, I will doubt the male clerk's yes more. Because is it clear why I would do that? Uh, I have a concern when I heard that you were going to grant Stan some concessions tomorrow. Or Dale, I'm sorry, Dale concessions tomorrow. Remember you said you were going to, because he was uh, questioning this uh, agreement here. And the reason I, uh, I felt that way is because he always has concerns. So, and he, he always gets favors from the boss every time he has these concerns, and you're going to buy into that. And so. I would start to feel I mattered less. If you okay, first of all, I didn't say this to you, but I might say it to you tomorrow. So uh, I said what I said without knowing ongoing dynamics of the group. If I work with a group ongoingly, I sooner or later will express that uh, to Dale. And I would say, you know, I, I am, I'm very concerned about the number of times that we're trying to make a decision and you have concerns about it. And I would like to connect with you about this offline, because I don't think this is a group thing. Uh, I want to say thanks. I found that really helpful. Um, and um, one of the stumbling blocks that our group had was that everybody wanted to jump right into proposals. And I find that that actually happens fairly frequently with groups, where I'm trying to get a list of, of maybe needs or something like that. And people just have an idea, they have a proposal, they want that, they want to talk mm -hmm. about right off the bat. Do you have, do you see that coming up a lot? Do you have any strategies? Uh, yes, I would then, if, if, if that energy is so much there, then I, and, and to some extent I did this here, I will hear the proposal and I will say to the group, you know, I want to hear the proposal and what I'm going to write on the board is only the principles that this proposal speaks for. Because initially, I, I want to just focus on principles. And, and this proposal may end up being what we, what we adopt at the end. I just want to delay it later. But tell me what the proposal is, and I will capture the, the principles. I don't want to fight with people. Any more questions?
just wanted to get a clear um, understanding of the, the start question that before you start getting the thoughts or feedback of the group, like what that key question was. Could you the, the, the needs gathering phase? Mm -hmm. It could be many different things. I, I, you know, I want to, um, it depends also on what I know. If I'm coming into a room and I know that there's a lot of controversy, um, then I, stay, I say, you know, I know that there's been a lot of, um, you know, acrimony in this department about the question of the budget. And what's important to me is that I want to hear all the different voices that exist about this um, and capture them. And I'm requesting everyone to hold uh, your thoughts until it's your turn so that I can really hear and capture everything that everybody says without getting back into the debate. Uh, uh, Okay.